and the artwork that I've seen on it is absolutely stunning. It looks That's really good. That's what I hear. I'm supposed to take a look at the artwork before I write this up, so I'm really looking forward to seeing well, that. Well, yes, yeah, Scott, Scott Clark's done a really good job. It's very stylized. He's sort of, um, he's got, I mean, again, it's taken me a while to to become familiar with a lot of the image artists because, like I said, I've been out of touch with mainstream comics for a number of years. And I'm very surprised by the level of quality. Yeah. You know, it's it, the, the nearest thing that I can remember to it is when I was working back at the start of my career for 2000 AD in England mm -hmm. during one of its, one of those wonderful periods where it seemed that every artist they had was a Kevin O'Neill or a Brian Bolland or a <laughs> Mick McMahon uh, or a Dave only, Gibbons. There's only one Kevin O'Neill. Well, that's right. I mean, but back then there was an awful lot of good artists working mm -hmm. for 2000 AD. It, as a writer, you felt spoiled. And sort of, I've got some of the same feeling working for Image because there's such a joy of drawing. Mm -hmm. um, these young guys, they're not quite as jaded as my generation have perhaps become. That you look at these incredibly elaborate, beautifully inked, ex you know, exquisitely coloured pictures. And the one thing that comes through with all of it is this incredible love of drawing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of a, a sort of a youthful enthusiasm that you you can't buy yeah you know there's there's i look at image comics these days and i'd have to say that sort of all right you know like there's a lot of things well many they're not aimed at me as an audience they're not aimed at a 40 year old sort of quasi intellectual they're aimed at sort of 13 year old boys that's fair enough but they I'd sure have, are I'd, pretty so they sure are pretty, and also they do have, it's an indefinable quality, but they sure do have a lot of energy. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I even look at some of the alternative comics, which are probably the kind that I prefer, you know, if it was down to personal choice, and the sort that I've certainly championed in the past and sort of, and still think are being done wonderfully. But I, there's something missing. The energy that I found in alternative comics a few years ago, the artwork's still as good, the stories are still as good, but there's a kind of a slump of vision, mm. if you like. There's something that they just don't seem to have the, the get up and go that they did, the sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Whereas with image comics, I'd have to say that from my sort of snobby mentality, I'd have to say that sometimes the energy is incoherent, but it's there. Mm-hmm. You know, there's an yes. incredible sort of churning sort of uh, vibrancy to a lot of these no. things. It's just a matter of channeling that energy into the right sort of vehicles, I think. And that's your job. That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. And I think that uh, it, between having people like you and James Robinson and Neil and uh, Kurt Busiak doing work for them and adding their brilliant and vibrant art, it's producing some of, as we said earlier, the most fun comics out there. There's some interesting mutations coming out, you know. I mean, and I think, I can't speak for Kurt Busiek, who I don't know. Um, I know James Robinson vaguely, or at least I've met him some years ago. Um, I know Neil very well, yeah. you know. Sort of, uh, we call each other by our Christian names, you know. I call him <laughs> Neil, he calls me Alan, it's great, you know. But, but sort of, uh, it's interesting to see. I, I think that, speaking for Neil, I know that me and Neil have found it a bit of an odd experience. Um sort of finding our way in to writing a and continues to be. I mean, I was saying to somebody the other day that when I wrote, um, I did a story for Raw um, with Mark Bayer in Art Spiegelman's Raw, mm -hmm. which uh, Raw is one of the most sophisticated comics, or was one of the most sophisticated oh, yeah. comic books in existence, and it was quite daunting to write a story that for something which I held in such high regard. But I'd have to say that although it was difficult coming up with a story idea that would suit an artist as extreme as Mark Bayer, mm -hmm. I'd have to say that it's probably more difficult for me to do something that is satisfactory in an image comic. You know, it's sort of, you'd think that the raw stuff here, it is more complex, it is more intellectually demanding, but there's, there's different dynamics at work mm -hmm. in an image comic. You... And to some degree, it's I'm find, I found it more difficult to to do something I'm really pleased with in yeah. in the image than I did with Raw. But I'm starting to get there. I'm, I'm starting to do a few of these things where I think, well, you know, this is not just good for an image comic. This is actually something that is 
good for me. Yes. This is something that I'm pleased with. Yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. Because, you know, that that's important because you're not a hack. And none of the things that you've written, either for image or otherwise, have ever given the impression that you're talking down to the audience. Right. And I mean, sort of, I'd say that... Um, I mean, like the, yeah, the, the thing about like, hack work, uh, I do the image comics very, very quickly compared to From Hell. Mm-hmm. Um, well, of course. I'd say that sort of like uh, an image comics takes me three days, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, they're three quite demanding days, but they're still quicker. But that's mm-hmm. part of the fun. Yes. With, with From Hell, part of the... I mean, From Hell has got its own pleasures mm-hmm. that are sort of perhaps deeper ones and more, more sustained ones. But... At the same time, it's such a slog, sort of researching all that stuff and yes. carefully putting the scenes together. And like maybe in three days of working on From Hell, I've wrote, written about, if I'm lucky, about twelve pages. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a much sort of slower process. Yeah. So, to some degree, writing the image comics, it gets me back to what intrigued, what 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 excited me about comics in the first place that they could just be done in this rush of enthusiasm, you know? Right. I mean, sort of, uh, the first books I did for Image, which were the 1963 books, that mm-hmm. took me right the way back to when I was 12 and sitting around in a friend's bedroom sort of drawing these little comics in <laughs> coloured ballpoint pen and sort of hiring them out to my friends for a penny a read or yeah. something like that. You know, it took me back to the kind of primal motivations for getting involved in comics. If I was doing image comics full time, I'd get bored. Yeah. There again, if I was doing all this highfalutin arty stuff, I'd get bored and stale. And depressed. Yeah, I'd get oh, Christ depressed. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean it's sort of, uh, you know, it's a lot more fun in some ways, zipping through the skies of New York with a band of superheroes than it is wandering through the blood and entrails in Whitechapel mm-hmm. in From Hell. You know, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a pick me up. Right. You know, after all that morbid big Victorian stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that's all I need. And actually, I should probably get out and open the store so that I can sell some of these lovely comics. Oh, you, you, you run a store, do you? Well, I work for Brian Hibbs at Comics Experience. Ah, right. I've never actually spoken or, or met with Brian, but I've read some of his letters in the Comics yeah. Journal, which I thought were those of a very informed and entertaining man. 